Despite nailing the reveal at last year's MWC, Huawei's impressive foldable phone, the Mate X never really made it any further than the briefings, press conferences, and some Chinese early adopters. It wasn't cheap, it wasn't perfect, but it still seemed like the strongest foldable phone option. And we all know how Samsung's first attempt turned out. Yes, Samsung's remaking of its Galaxy Fold is the perfect analog for the Mate XS 5G, a phone that should be better prepared for prime time. The phone itself hasn't changed too much. There's still an 8-inch unfolded display, transforming to a 6.6-inch phone in standard smartphone mode. We spent some time with the device, but note that we never actually reviewed the Mate X. It stayed in China. There's still a release button to satisfyingly unfurl the smartphone, and the hinge itself has been upgraded and has even more heft to it, something that the original Mate X wasn't lacking. According to Huawei, the number of parts and components in that hinge have been bumped up to around 150. I can feel the difference, I think. Huawei didn't have last year's Mate X around for comparison. Unfolded, the screen isn't quite perfectly flat, but the seam is as subtle as Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip, which also packs a more advanced folding screen. For the Mate X, there are no claims of ultra-thin glass, but there are some technical improvements. Four layers, including a new polyamide material that is aimed at keeping the screen better protected. Now, like my colleague Chris Velasco, who has reviewed most foldable phones so far, I'm still nervous about the toughness of foldables. The Mate X isn't immune to those concerns. Along the back, the seam of the hinge seems a little too exposed. You can see what appears to be some of the internal hardware. Sure, this may be the early model ahead of finalized retail phones, but it still makes me kinda nervous. As for the rest of the hardware, there are more upgrades. There's a 4,500 milliamp battery split between two cells with Huawei's new high-speed charging standard. Because that's a lot of power, the phone has demanded a new cooling system with a design that Huawei's calling the Flying Fish Fin, behind the scenes at least. This is all aimed at speeding up the cooling process. That also helps with the new Huawei-made Kirin 990 5G chip, which boosts some high theoretical data speeds, although I'm still waiting for confirmation as to whether it now supports millimeter wave tech that's used by most US carriers, not that that matters, and other phone networks around the world. Business as usual when it comes to the camera array located again on the hinge unit. This includes a 14 megapixel main camera with an 8 megapixel telephoto camera and an ultra wide 20 megapixel shooter. There's also a time of flight sensor too for your portrait effects and the rest. Nothing has particularly changed here and Huawei's mobile cameras are still among the best, even if a lot of you will never get to try them. Beyond the hardware upgrades, Huawei outlined new scalable app capabilities that should make the most of buying a foldable phone. The best example I saw in my limited time was how Huawei's email app would switch UI dependent on whether the Mate X was unfolded or not. At full size, you can see and interact with your inbox tabs, the kind of view you'd get on a proper tablet. There's been uniform improvements across all of Huawei's own apps to better fit the foldable's unorthodox screen size and help strengthen the proposition of the thing. The struggle remains that it's not got the Google apps and services you expect and want to use. With Huawei's post-Google devices running on Android open source project, you get the Android feel, but it's like a freshly bought phone, a blank slate that's hard to customize and use like you want to. Folding and unfolding aside, the Mate X offer makes for a pretty dry experience. I watched YouTube through the browser, played with the camera, and otherwise cast my eye across this site. But then what else can I test? I could install TikTok, I guess. It's one of the few notable apps available on Huawei's version of Google Play. Like Huawei's other 2020 hardware so far, it looks and feels great. The specifications are great. The Mate XS is an exciting, desirable product, but the reality, what if you actually bought one, is duller and the software is to blame. Huawei is offering its help and money to speed up app development and get apps like Uber working outside of Google services. But progress is slow. If you're keen enough to hunt down APKs and get your favorite apps on Huawei's newest phones, yeah, you can do this. But according to those who have battled with the Google-less Mate 30 Pro and our own experiences, it's all a bit of a mess. Some apps will crash, some won't work. The realities make it harder to get more excited about Huawei's mobile offerings. Hardier folding mechanisms and better uses of the unfolded screen are necessary and great news. But this Google stuff remains the company's big challenge. The future of Huawei's foldables might well hinge on it. Bye.
Blah, 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 blah.